fans from the Wheelchair Gang, Therese here, and welcome back to another video where today we're going to be discussing something a little bit more serious than what I would usually talk about. Now this video kind of acts as a sequel not only to my toxic positivity video, but also a fantastic video that Dominic G. Martin made on racism in the Doctor Who community. I highly suggest you give it a watch. And it inspired me to talk about another type of prejudice that I've seen quite a bit of in the Doctor Who community, as sad as it is, ableism in the Doctor Who community. Now, ableism is obviously basically just bigotry against disabled people and unfortunately it's more common than you'd probably like to believe that it is for a fandom whose central character preaches tolerance and acceptance of everybody. I'll put a couple screenshots on screen of stuff that I've had to endure over my time doing this online. I've never really spoken about it because to be honest it's something quite private and I've never really wanted to address it too publicly in fear of just being you know accused of making a fuss or being dramatic or being over the top, but as I said, that video on racism really inspired me to talk about the bigotry I have to experience quite regularly in, in the Doctor Who fandom, and one of the messages that I've just shown was ve very recent as well. This is something that I don't know why it happens, and I'll be honest, it's not always helped by the main show, because there's certain arcs for certain characters that kind of give in to a lot of the tropes of disabled characters. I can think of two recent examples off the top of my head. The first one, and I've sort of talked about this before in a video that's now privated, because again, I was too scared to talk about it. The blind girl in It Takes You Away, she falls into the trope of having to be protected by someone who is fully able, and she's not capable of looking after herself, plays into that stereotype of disabled people not being able to do that. Luckily, the redeeming part about that is that she does figure out that the Xavan parallel dimension thing is bad, so she does figure out stuff on her own. So I can say that that's not as bad as it could have been, but it did annoy me on, on first viewing that yeah, she kind of just used as like a damsel in distress stereotype, but obviously the disabled equivalent of that. The second and more prevalent one within the Doctor Who show itself is Ryan Sinclair. Now, Ryan Sinclair, as you all probably know, has dyspraxia, which, as you know, is a developmental coordination disorder, which, as it sort of suggests in the definition, impacts someone's physical coordination, which is why in certain scenes, obviously, Ryan is struggling to ride a bike or climb a ladder, etc. The problem, however, is that this is something that kind of is only relevant when the plot requires it to be relevant. The rest of the time, these issues just don't affect him, or at least they don't in any overt way a lot of the time. And I think that this is also something that plays into a harmful stereotype. The disabilities are something that can just be gotten over if you try hard enough. It's a quite a harmful stereotype and a kind of dangerous message to send. This is kind of exemplified in the series 12 arc, where it's basically he starts off the series not being able to throw a basketball, and he ends the series with the ability to throw said basketball. The implication, of course, being that his dyspraxia improved by travelling with the Doctor? It's a really weird arc, and one that I think was mishandled. To this arc's credit, it does end with Ryan still struggling to ride the bike, implying that his dyspraxia was not fixed by his travels with the Doctor, but then if that's the case, why include the arc about him throwing the basketball? It just came across as a bit insensitive and potentially misfired. I think that part of the reason the community's been struggling with ableism is precisely because the show paints disabilities in a very odd way. Obviously, it's not as bad as the racism or anything like that experience in the Doctor Who community, but certainly I do think it's an issue. And the more and more I see of it, the more and more I've been compelled to make a video like this. But again, I've been scared of the reaction. But I hope that this video at least sort of gave you a little bit of an insight into to my feelings and what I've had to sort of put up with through being in the fandom. Yeah, thank you all for watching and I will see you later. Yeah! Yeah!